And joining us for more on all of this, Wyoming Senator John Barrasso is a Republican on the Foreign Relations Committee. It's great to have you here. Thanks. I have to say I was a little shocked that one of your colleagues, but on the Democratic side, Chris Van Hollen, actually said that he doesn't think UNRWA was, actually, that anyone from, from UNRWA was helping Hamas. Watch him here. When it comes to UN provided humanitarian assistance, like humanitarian mm -hmm. assistance through UNRWA, there's been no evidence of diversion to Hamas. And then, this is, he said this very, very clearly. Uh, I have tried to tell my colleagues who keep coming back from meeting okay. with Netanyahu government officials, spreading this, this, yes. this lie, this myth about diversion from UNRWA. Now, there right. may be diversion yeah. to other places, but not from UNRWA. This was a surprise to me because I mm -hmm. didn't think that there was anybody who disbelieved no. what we have been hearing about UNRWA for months. And that's the UN Relief Fund, that money has been going to them from years to Hamas. And this is money, they have blood on their hands. There's no question, and not a single dime should go to them into the future. The United Nations has failed in its mission, and we've seen that now repeatedly. This money has gone to build the, the tunnels and the terror network that we have with Hamas. You've just showed the video of all of those tunnels. Hundreds and hundreds of miles of tunnels, more than the New York subway system. Where'd the money come from? United States, United Nations, funneling it to this organization. Not a single penny should go to them, period. Uh, it appears the pressure on this administration just continues to ramp up, and I think we see that in some of the protests all over the country. Uh, but then you've got Chuck Schumer last week calling to mm -hmm. get Netanyahu out there, okay, or out of there, I should say. Nancy Pelosi was asked about that this weekend here. Schumer's speech was an act of courage, an act of love for Israel. What is wrong with advocating for elections in a democracy? People have different views, and they express them, and that's a beautiful thing. But for him to say, what does that say if he won't, won't even say that as the war run, run, winds down, the people of Israel should speak? That's all Chuck was saying. Hey, that sounds, she says she heard it. How'd you hear it? Uh, it was a d disgraceful mm -hmm. call for interference by the United States into Israel's elections. And I thought it was Schumer just doing Biden's bidding. I think that we have a president who didn't have the guts to do it himself, so he had his water boy, Chuck Schumer, give that speech, uh, going after our closest ally in the Middle East, somebody that's been a friend from the beginning of Israel to the United States. It was wrong, and obviously Republicans stood up and said so. Uh, Israel is a democracy. They have absolutely every right to hold an election. They have a right to defend themselves. They're going to keep doing that. I think the Democrats are really scared right now because what we see is so many of the far left Democrats are supporting Hamas instead of Israel. They're afraid it's going to cost Joe Biden the election. Uh, it is fractured indeed. And what Netanyahu said is, we're not a banana republic. Leave us alone. Yeah, and it also helped bring the Israelis back together. Just this just in from the White House. Apparently, Netanyahu. And Biden will speak today. So we'll get readouts from both sides and see how that goes. Meantime, last week we were filled with a conversation about TikTok and what should happen. The House passed it in a quite a bipartisan fashion. This now goes over to the Senate. And then over the weekend we hear this, that there are rumored bite dance buyers that are putting themselves together. We have Steve Mnuchin, might be familiar to everyone, former Treasury Secretary under President Trump. We have Kevin O'Leary, of course you know him. Uh, Bobby Kotick, he's a former Activision CEO. And then uh, someone I don't know, Chris Pavlovsky of Rumble. So there is a potential buyer. Would that be a good solution for everybody so that it's sold off and everybody gets to keep using the app. I think it would be a good solution. Right now, TikTok, to me, is a national security threat. Why? Because it's under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. That's the threat component of it when we have 170 million Americans whose information is that under that same control. So they, they can use it to spy on us. You know how people get very mad when we hear of a spy balloon going overhead? Or, you know, from us in the West, where you see that China is buying farmland, ranch land near military installations? This is much, much worse in terms of what they're trying to do. I met with the CEO of TikTok last week. He was in Washington. And I said, look, the problem is not TikTok itself. It's the problem of the ownership. And if we can find a group like we have here, I think it would make the solution better. Continue with TikTok, but not controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. We'll see how that goes. Senator, thank you for being here. It's nice Thanks to see you in person. Great to both see you of us again. want to express to you thank our you. profound gratitude for the loss of your um, our profound sorrow, I Thank should you. say, for the loss of your wife, Thank Bobby. You. Okay. Thanks, well, Dana. She watched you every morning, yeah, right up till the end. So she loved you guys. She's a Thank great you, patriot, Senator. and you had a you had a yeah. wonderful love story and a great example for the rest of us. Thank you. Thank Stay you. strong, okay? We'll. Thank you, Thank Senator. You.